Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 56. Day 3056, 3 is to indicate that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 56, we are on day we are on page number 261. Yesterday we solved problem 1 through 5 that you see on that page on page 261, algebra exercises. Today we're going to pick up from where we left off. We did, as I said, 1 through 5. Today we'll begin with problem number 6. It simply says, solve each of the following equations for x. The very first one is very straightforward. Simple linear equation, 5x minus 7, we are told is equal to 28. What can we do here? Well, let's bring the 7 to that side by adding 7 to both sides. 7 is going to cancel out. And we're going to have 5x, which is going to come down, equals 28 plus 7, which is 35. Divide both sides by 5, and x will equal 7. And that's all there is. And we can very quickly verify it. So we put it back in here. 7 times 5 is 35. 35 minus 7 is indeed 28. Let's look at part B. In part B, we have 12 minus 5x equals, we are told, x plus 30. So the idea here is to bring all the unknown to one side and all the known quantity to the other side and the convention, the tradition, uh, the custom is that one brings the unknown quantity to the left hand side. But here in this case, well, let's do it that way. Why not? We can always, I was going to say that if you bring the x to this side, you're going to end up with a negative coefficient, but we can deal with that later. So let's bring the x to this side by subtracting x from both sides both sides of the equation, and let's bring the 12 to that side by subtracting 12 from both sides of the equation. Voila. So this is a plus 12, this is a minus 12, we can get rid of the 12, and similarly we have plus x and a minus x, we can get rid of that one. That was the whole idea. So now we have minus 5x, a minus 5x and a, and a, a negative 5x, that is, a negative 5x and a negative x, which is going to give us negative 6x. And here, 30 minus 12, 30 minus 10 would have been 20, so it's 18. Positive 18, you understand? Positive 18. We have to get rid of this negative, negative sign here. I don't like this negative business. So we can very simply multiply, multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. Now I'm doing baby steps, you understand? Negative and negative is positive, so we get positive 6x equals 2. Positive and negative is going to give us negative 18. Divide both sides by 6 and you will get to see that x equals negative 3 x equals negative c. We can very quickly verify it if you like. We are told that 12 minus 5x, 12 minus 5x, and x we are claiming, we, x we are claiming to be negative 3. We want to put it back in here and see if it makes sense to see if our claim is correct. A negative and a negative is going to become positive, so it's 12 plus 15. 12 plus 15, and let's see what we get on that side. Here we have x plus 30, but we are claiming x to be negative 3. And we want to see if our claim is if our claim is valid. So let's put in negative three for x, x plus thirty, x plus thirty, negative three and the positive thirty is going to be twenty-seven, and twelve plus fifteen is indeed twenty-seven. It works. Let's look at part C. In part C we are told five times. 5 times x plus 2 has to equal, we are told, 1 minus 3x. 1 minus 3x. Let's see what we can do. So, we have, so we have 5 times x, we can open the parentheses, so we have 5x, and then 5 times 2 is going to give us 10, equals 1 minus 3x. And now we can worry about, now we can worry about bringing the, all the unknown to one side and co constant to the other side. So let's bring this negative 3x to this side by adding 
positive 3x to both sides of the equation. And that is positive. So this negative 3x and a positive 3x, they're going to kill each other. That was the whole idea. Now we need to bring the 10 to the other side. Let's subtract 10 from both sides. This is a positive one. And again, a positive 10 and a negative 10 is going to cancel out. And here we'll end up with positive 1 and a negative 10. A positive 1 and a negative 10 is going to give us negative 9. And here we have 5x and a 3x. This is 8x. Oh, we're getting some strange answer here. I hope it's correct. Which tells us that if you divide both sides by 8, it tells us that x, x equals negative 9, 8. Very peculiar answer. Let's verify it, see if it works. Let's see if it works. Keep your fingers crossed. I don't think we made any mistake because it's a very straightforward, simple equation. Well, let's see what we can do. Maybe we're going we're gonna to verify it here. So we have 5, 5 times x, which we are claiming to be 9, 10, 9, 9, 8 rather. That's our x, 5x plus 2. 5x plus 2, but instead of writing 2 as a 2, let's write 2 as 16 over 2, 16 over 8 rather. 16 over 8, so that we have the common denominator. So that's your 2. That's, this, is the, this is the x right here, x, which, is, which we are claiming to be ni negative 9, 8, plus 2, which, is, which we are writing as 16 over 8. So 9, negative 9, 8, and a six, positive 16, 8. 16 minus 9 is going to be 7, 8. So we end up with 5 times 7, 8. Let's see what we get here. On this side we're going to get 1 minus 3x and x we are claiming to be negative 9, 8. Negative 9, eight. keep that in mind, it's negative. And let's write our 1 as 8, 8. So here we have 8, 8 and a negative and a negative is going to become positive and 9 times 3 is going to be 27, 8. So it looks like we have here 27 plus 8, 27 plus 10, 27 plus 10 would have been 37, so it's 35, 8. 35, 8 is what we're getting on this side. And here, 7 times 5, 7 5 is a 35. Oh, it checks out. It is indeed correct. As weird as it, as, uh, as weird as it may look, the negative 9, 8 that is, but it turns out it is in fact the correct answer. Let's move on to D. Let's move on to D. D says x plus 6 times 2x minus 1 has to equal 0. Well, this is quite straightforward, simple, because it's already factorized for us. And since the product of two quantities is equal to 0, so if we have two quantities A times B, if we are told is equal to 0, then either A is equal to 0 or B is equal to 0. Or perhaps they are both equal to 0. But one of them at least has to equal to 0 because otherwise we won't get the product to be 0. So one more time, if A times B we are told is equal to 0, then either A is equal to 0 or B is equal to 0. In other words, either here, this implies that either this quantity x plus 6 is equal to 0 or, let's continue here, or the second possibility is that this second quantity 2x minus 1, 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. If x plus 6 is equal to 0, that in turn implies that x must be negative 6. Of course, that's the first solution, x has to be negative 6 because we can clearly see that negative 6 and a positive 6 is going to give us 0. Once we get a 0 here, it doesn't matter what this quantity is, 0 times anything is 0. Or, 2x plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. Let's add 1 to both sides. Which means 2x is equal to 1, which means x is equal to half. Now let's see if that makes sense. 2 times half, 2 times half is 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0, you see? Those are the two solutions. Let's move on to part E. Part E. Part E tells us that x squared plus 5x minus 14 is equal to 0. Now as you can see, unlike the previous question, this one is not factorized. 
it is given in the form of a quadratic standard quadratic equation so we're going to have to see if we can find the factors so we're looking for two numbers whose product has to be negative 14 we're looking for two numbers such that their product is negative 14 as you can see their product is negative 14 the second characteristic that these two numbers have to possess is that their sum has to be positive 5 when we add them up we have to get positive 5 for example a positive 7 and a negative 2 positive 7 and oh that actually works positive 7 and a negative 2 would give us positive 5 and it turns out that the positive 7 and a negative 2 their product is also negative 14 so we just found the two factors so let's put it here so we're going to break up our 5x we're going to break up our 5x we're going to write our 5x as the sum of positive 7x and a negative 2x because positive 7x and a negative 2x is 5x those are going to be the factors there we go so x squared 5x we're going to write that as positive 7x and negative 2x which one should we write which one should we write first which one should we write first Seven, positive 7x or negative 2x which one should we write first the answer is it doesn't really matter it really makes no difference minus 14 is equal to 0 let's look at these two terms let's look at these two terms and we find a common factor of x we take out the common factor of x from these two terms and we left here from the first term we are left with x after we take away x as a common factor we are left with 7 from the second term now we're going to look at the next two terms the third and the fourth term in the next two terms right here we have a negative 2 we have a negative 2 and a negative 14 do they have anything in common? the answer is yes they have a common factor of negative 2 so the question now is after we take up a negative 2 from the, as a common factor what are we left with from the first term of this third term? the answer is just x answer is just x because negative 2 times x is going to give us back to negative 2x and negative 2 times what number is going to give us negative 14? the answer is positive 7 well, again because negative, negative 2 times positive 7 is going to give us back our negative 14 now we want to look at these two quantities these two quantities uh, this thing is, is one quantity and this thing is one quantity and we find that they have a common factor of x plus 7 let's take that out as a common factor x plus 7 comes out here we're left with x and here we're left with negative 2 and that has to equal to 0 which in turn implies that either x plus 7 is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0 if x plus 7 is equal to 0 that in turn implies that x must be negative 7 or x must be positive 2 that's it and if you wanted to we can quick, very quickly verify our answers to make sure that make sure that we did not make any mistakes let's verify negative 7 okay I'm not going to re rewrite all, all the nitty gritty details you just have to follow me okay so we're putting negative 7 in plus of x negative 7 squared negative 7 squared negative 7 squared plus 5x plus 5 times x minus 14 negative 7 squared is going to be positive 49 and then negative 35 and then negative 14 as you can see 35 plus 14 is indeed 49 how do we know that 35 plus 10 would have been 45 and another 4 is going to give us 49 so see 49 minus 49 is equal to 0 it does check out it does check out this answer is correct what about 2 let's quickly do it 2 squared is going to be 4 plus 5 times 2 is 10 and then minus 14 minus 14 and that also checks out that's also is equal to 0 and that's all that's all it is what I want to do very quickly is to actually show you that it really doesn't matter which one you write first let's rewrite them in a different order let's put x squared first let's put x squared first and then put negative 2x and then a positive 7x and then negative 14 and see what happens as I said it really doesn't matter you can write them in any order so here from the first two terms we have a common factor of x after we take away x as a common factor we are left with x from the first term and negative 2 from the second terms now we look at these two terms 7x and a negative 14 
we have a common factor of 7. After we take away 7 in the common factor, from here we are left with x. And 7 times what number is going to give us negative 14? The answer is 2, or negative 2. And now from this quantity and that quantity, we have a common factor of negative 2. We take away negative 2 as a common factor. From here we are left with x, and from here we are left with positive 7. As you can see clearly, we can do the same exact thing, exactly what we got here before. It really makes no difference as to which order you do it in. Now we could actually move on, listen carefully now, okay? We could actually move on to the last part, part F that is, and finish this bloody thing. But we are not going to do that. What we are going to spend the rest of the time in this video is analyzing this parabola. Let's study this parabola a little bit more. Let's study this parabola a little bit more. So we, we already know that this thing, after we factorize it, it comes out to be this thing right here. x minus 2 times x plus 7. That's what this is. Equals to 0. And of course, and of course, it's a quadratic equation and therefore it, it represents a parabola. Can you tell me a little bit about this parabola? If somebody were to come up to you and ask you to write a little essay on this parabola, can you describe a little, little bit about this parabola? What, do, what does a person mean when, when a person asks you, can you describe this parabola a little bit? Well, describing a parabola simply means you tell, you tell that person some salient features of the parabola, of the given parabola. For example, you tell the x-intercepts of the parabola, you tell where it cuts the y-axis, you tell, uh, tell, tell the person about the line of symmetry, you tell uh, about the vertex, or, vertex or, uh, the coordinates of the vertex, and then plot it. And that's what it is. Question is, can you do all that here? Let's do it together, shall we? Very quickly. So, this thing is going to equal to zero, which is our y here. This is, this is y. Let's plot it right here. The question is, y is equal to 0, if y is equal to 0, we're talking about x-intercepts. Where is the y is going to equal to 0? y is going to equal to 0 when x is equal to positive 2, when x is equal to positive 2, and or when x is equal to negative 7. Those two are the x-intercepts, positive 2 and a negative 7. I just realized we have positive 2 and negative 7. I shouldn't have put this line right in the middle because we have, we have to go all the way up to negative 7 and only positive 2. So let's do it here. Voilà. One, positive 2 and negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So it cuts here and it cuts here. From positive 2 to negative 7, from a positive 2 to a negative 7 is a distance of it's a distance of 9. As you can clearly see, it's a distance of 9. Distance of 7 from y, y axis to here and a distance of 2 there. 9. What's going, to be the, what's going to be the equation of the line of symmetry for this parabola? One more time. What is the equation going to be for the line of symmetry for this parabola? Well, the line of symmetry is so-called because it's a line around which the parabola is going to be symmetric, which is going to be exactly halfway mark. Where is the halfway mark here? 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. So it's going to be 4.5. So here we go. 4.5 you're looking for. 1, that's the distance of 1, 2, 3, four and four and a half right here, whatever that happens to be. We'll worry about that in a second. Similarly, if you were to count from here, as you can see, it's four, one, two, three, four, and four and a half. Where is that? Well, it happens to be at negative one, negative two, negative two and a half, it seems like. What does negative two and a half represent? The negative two and a half represents the line of symmetry. The equation for the line of symmetry the reason we are doing this exercise is because it could very well appear in the exam where they simply give you this equation here, either in the standard form of the quadratic equation or already factorized. If it's, all, if it's not already factorized, then we're going to have to factorize it ourselves. So they give you an equation of a, of a, of a, a quadratic equation, that is, they give you an equation of a parabola, and the question simply asks, what is the line of symmetry? What is the equation for the line of, what is the equation of the line of symmetry for the given parabola? Very simple, very straightforward answer. To which the answer here is going to be the line of, the equation for the line of symmetry is x equals to negative two and a half. 
or they can ask you what are the x-intercepts, which is very simple, x-intercepts are positive 2 and negative 7. Or they can ask you what is the y-intercept, let's find out the y-intercept. y-intercept is where x is equal to 0, y-intercept is right here. That's where the parabola cuts the y-axis. If x is equal to 0, this guy is going to drop out, this guy is going to drop out, it's at negative 14, very simple. So let's locate some place here, it doesn't really matter where, it doesn't really matter where, it's just a negative 14 is here. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be by the scale. Let's just put there, there and let's put down the coordinates of this y, coordinates of this y intercept, it's going to be 0 and negative 14. Let's work on the vertex, let's work on the vertex. What is the x coordinate of the vertex? Well, x coordinate of the vertex is very simple. X coordinate of the vertex is very simple because we just established the line of symmetry. This is the line of symmetry. This is the line of symmetry. Let's see if I can do a decent job with a, with a different color maybe. It has to cut through here. It has to go through there. Let's see what I can do. That doesn't look too bad. That doesn't look too bad. There you go. This is the guy you're looking for. The coordinates of this guy, vertex. Well, the reason we plotted this thing is because we can clearly see that x coordinate of this point is very straightforward. x coordinate of this point is two and a half, negative two and a half, which is the line of symmetry. It is the negative two and a half. The x coordinate is negative two and a half. Question is, what is the y coordinate? What is the y coordinate? Let's find out, shall we? How are we going to find out? We need the room, so I'm going to, have to erase all of this thing. The way we're going to find it out is very straightforward. We already know what the value of x is at that vertex. The value of x is negative two and a half. We're going to put it in here and solve for y. This is our y. This whole thing equals y. We're going to solve for y. Do you understand? So let's solve for it, y is equal to x squared, which is this guy here. Let's write that as negative 5 over 2. Negative 5 over 2. Or better yet, all right, let's, let's, let's leave it at negative 2 and a half. It, it, it really doesn't matter squared, so that's your x squared, plus 5 times x, which is negative 2 and a half, which is 5 times x, minus 14. All right, Good. let's pick up some speed. Negative 2 and a half. I hope, I hope you know some basic things that you have to know by heart, which are uh, many things, but one among, among those many things are the, some basic fundamental squares. You have to know your squares 1 through 20, and some other squares, such as you shouldn't have to think about it as to what is the square of 25, what's the square of 50, what's the square of 1000, a square of 1000 is a million, what's the square of 50, is 2500, 50 times 50, what's the square of 25, do you know? The square of 25 is 625, 25 squared, 25 squared is 625. Where am I going with this thing? Where are we going with this thing? We don't have 25 here, we have two and a half. Well, that's your two and a half right here. Right here, that's two and a half. So if 25 squared is 625, then it stands to reason that 2.5 squared must be 6.25. Must be 6.25, which is then a six and a quarter. Positive or negative? Positive or negative? Of course, positive because negative times negative is going to be positive. So it's going to be six and a quarter right here. Okay, let's continue. Let's, let's continue. Let's see where we go with this thing. Okay, stay with me in this story. It's important that you stay in this story with me. 5 times negative 2. 5 times negative 2 is going to be negative 10. And 5 times a half, with the negative sign in front of it, is going to be negative 5 halves. I hope I haven't lost you already. Negative 5 half is same as negative 2 and a half. Isn't it? Negative 5 half is negative 2 and a half. And a minus 14. And minus 14. Negative 10 and negative 2, negative 10 and negative 2 and a half is negative 12 and a half. And a negative 14. Oh, what do you know? 
it just turns out it's just a fluke. What I'm about to say is just a pure coincidence. Do you understand? It's just a fluke that 12 and a half is exactly two times this amount. If you have six dollars and twenty-five cents, if you have six dollars and twenty-five cents and somebody gives you another six dollars and twenty-five cents, that's twelve dollars and fifty cents. You see, six and a quarter is exactly half of that. So let's rewrite this thing, negative twelve and a half, as negative six and a quarter and other negative six and a quarter. Alright? And this one comes down. So all we have done here, all we have done here is that we have taken our negative, we have taken our negative twelve and a half and written it in two parts. Why? Because this is equal to that, we can just cross it out. So all we are left is negative six and a quarter and a negative fourteen. Negative six and a negative fourteen is twenty. So it looks like it's going to be twenty and a quarter. Twenty and a quarter. Negative twenty and a quarter. And that's your vertex for the that's your y coordinates of the vertex. Negative twenty and a quarter. That's it, we are done. We have to describe the parabola a little bit. We, had to we, had, we were asked to describe the parabola a little bit and we have done so. Describing a parabola simply means that you locate its intercepts, both x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. We have located both of the x-intercepts right here. We have located the y-intercept. We have located a equation for the line of symmetry. Once we have the equation of line of symmetry, we have the x-coordinate of the vertex. Once we have the x-coordinate of the vertex, we have the y-coordinate. We can figure out the y coordinates of the vertex, which we have done so already. And once we have the coordinates of the vertex, we can plot the bloody thing. All done. That's it. The last thing I want to uh, I want to learn. We want to learn is. Let me actually put the question on the blackboard before we, before we worry about it. Again, we need the room, so we're gonna have to. We have no choice but to erase something. Just give me one second. Here's the question. Here's the question. It says, it says, find the vertex, find the vertex for the above, above parabola, find the vertex for the above parabola by what is known as completing the square. There's a technique called Completing the square. Completing the square. Let's learn the technique, shall we? What we're going to do actually is we're going to write down the coordinates of the vertex from here somewhere else so we can use that space. So we can show that the vertex, the vertex that we are about to find by this method known as completing the square does indeed agree with the vertex that we found manually which is right here we found the vertex to be negative two and a half and a negative twenty and a quarter let's see what we can do here I need to pick up speed here because I feel that the video is going to be too long so let's do that shall we we have x squared plus 5x. Completing the square simply means writing the equation in this form. Writing the equation in this form. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This is how this is the form we want it in. Because if we can write it in this form, this represents a plus b whole squared. Voila, we just completed the square. So x squared is x squared. We have 5x. So we want to write that as two times. Why don't we do it under, right underneath? It'll be easier to follow. But how do you negative two and a half and let's do it right underneath? It'll be easier to follow. It says find the vertex by completing the square. Of this particular equation. So let's do it together. So x squared is just x squared minus 2 times x which is right here. Now the question is what can we write here so that we get our original middle uh, term in the middle. We cannot change that. It's a negative 5x. It must remain negative 5x. 
we have introduced two here, we have to undo it. So if we write our, uh, uh, this missing part as 5 over 2, what's going to happen is that, what's going to happen is that this 2 from the bottom is going to cancel out from this 2 here and we're going to end up with our negative 5x. You see 5 times x and a negative. We, we retrieve the middle term that we had lost before. So that's our b. Our a is x minus 2 times a times b. Our b is 5 over 2. So now we need b squared. We need b squared which is going to be 5 over 2 squared. So far so good. We have completed the square. Now we have to worry about the fact that we had negative 14 here. So let's put the negative 14 here. And now we have to undo what we have done here which is we have introduced this new quantity which is this guy right here. We must undo it by subtracting the same quantity. Oh no, you see? We added it here, we subtracted it here, it's no longer there, it disappears. We have, we have undone what we had done before and now what we see here, let's erase this bottom part, we no longer need it. As weird as it may seem, as weird as it may seem, we're not going to cancel out the two obviously, which, which I was just doing, doing it to show it to you that it goes away. As weird as it seems, this equation is the exact same equation as that equation. That equation that you see there is the exact same equation as x squared minus 5x minus 14. This equation that you see here, x squared minus 2 times x times 5 over 2 plus 5 over 2 squared. These three terms are the same exact thing as this. Do you understand? And then minus 14 and then we... we uh, or rather, let, let me start again x squared minus 2x minus 2 times x times 5 over 2 plus 5 over 2 x whole squared minus 14 minus 5 over 2 whole squared. This entire thing boils down to this thing because this gets rid of this guy and this 2 gets rid of this y so we end up with x squared times minus 5x. This thing is goes away because they are positive and negative. Minus 14 equals 0. Now these first three terms, these first three terms right here, is, it boils down to x minus 5 over 2. Oh, we have a problem. Did I mess it up? Oh, yes, I did mess it up. It's a positive here, not a negative. I have to redo everything. It's a positive. It's a positive. How did I catch myself? Because here we were getting negative. And if we're getting negative, it means the parabola shifted to the right. But we already know the vertex is negative 2.5. If the vertex is negative to, if the x coordinate of the vertex is negative two and a half, the parabola is shifted to the left by two and a half units. That's because I had made a mistake here. So this is positive. What does this boil down to? Well, this is this is fourteen. Let's write our fourteen as fourteen times four over four, and let's write this guy as twenty-five over four equals to zero. Let's see what we end up with. Okay. 14 times 4, how much is 14 times 4? 14 times 10 is 40, and 4 times 4 is 60, uh, 16. Four, 14 times 4 is what we have to figure out. Well, we know 10 times 4 is 40, and 4 times 4 is 16, so it's 56. That's one way we could have figured it out, that 14 times 4 is 56. Or we could have realized that 15 times 4 is 60. We know 15 times 4 is 60. If 15 fours are 60, then 14 four must be 4 less than 60, which is 56. So this is negative 56 over 4, and this is 25 over 4. I wonder what they're going to add up to. 56 and a 14, or rather 56 and a 25. 6 plus 5 is 1. Carry 1, 2, 5, 7, and 8. It comes out to be negative 81 over 4. Negative 81 over 4 can be written as negative 80 over 4 and a negative 1 quarter. And negative 80 over 4 can be written as negative 20 and quarter. Voila, there you go. So one more time, I'm going to raise all of this thing. This plus this adds up to this. Equals to 0. And that is our parabola. Let me put a box around it. We have just located the vertex by completing the square. 
Now let's take a look at it. We're going to plot it here. I need, I need the room obviously always. We're always running out of room. So what does it tell us? Po positive 5 halves tells us that the parabola is going to be shifted to the left by 5 halves. 5 halves is 2.5. 1, 2, 3, right here. That's the line of symmetry. And that's the, that's the x-coordinate of the vertex, and this is the y-coordinate of the vertex. This is written uh, after we complete the square, the parabola is written in this form, where this part, negative of it, that is, represents the x-coordinate of the vertex, and this represents the y-coordinate. And that is 20 and a quarter. Right here. The coordinates are going to be negative 2 and a half, and negative 20 and a quarter. And the parabola is right here. We, I, I don't remember what the detail was, but that's where it's going to sit. It's going to go something like this. Wherever the x, x wherever the vertex happened to be, I forget now. Wherever the intercept, x intercept happens to be, I forgot. There you go. We just did the same thing, but with a different method. We just look at it. So this form of the, this form of the parabola is written, is, uh, this, this, this format is written in a way which clearly, which shows us the what uh, which the coordinates of the vertex is the same parabola parabola can be written in many different forms you can write it as a standard quadratic equation which is simply ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero or we can factorize it or we can write it in this form by completing the square do you understand what about the last part the last part even though there is only one part left but again i want to spend a little time on it as a matter of fact when i said little time i lie through my teeth what I want to do actually is to spend the entire video on the last part and there is a reason for it. We'll, we'll learn that reason, we'll find out the reason, what was the reason why are we going to spend the entire video doing 6F tomorrow when the tomorrow comes. Okay, bye now.